The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is here. It's the best that we have from Samsung. How does it compare to the best from Apple, the iPhone 15 Pro Max? Well, let's put these head-to-head -head Super SAS style and find out. So initially looking at the build and design, both of these are using titanium. Uh, the iPhone 15 Pro Max introduced titanium a few months ago when it was released and Samsung also now have the titanium frame. Now, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is the smaller device overall. It also weighs a few grams lighter and we have these curved edges compared to these more flat and sharper edges of the S24 Ultra. And for those reasons, I would say that the iPhone 15 Pro Max is the more comfortable device to use overall. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is available in four colors, a black titanium, white titanium, blue titanium, as well as a natural titanium. Yes, they're calling each of the colors titanium. And guess what? Samsung are also calling all of the colors titanium, but they flipped it. So they're called titanium gray, titanium black, titanium violet, and titanium yellow. So they've switched to having titanium at the front rather than at the end. But anyway, there are three additional colors available of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, which are available exclusively from samsung.com. They are a titanium blue, orange, as well as a green. Now, if you are interested in picking up the S24 Ultra in these colors, then you can use my exclusive affiliate link down in the description below. That's gonna give you double the storage as well as up to $150 in credit. You're gonna to wanna to check that out. Both devices do have an IP68 water and dust resistant rating. However, you can submerge the iPhone 15 Pro Max deeper into water compared to the S24 Ultra. I'm not sure how important that's gonna to be to you. Now, with the design of the devices, I would say both are incremental. The iPhone 15 Pro Max, we've had this similar design for the past few years. And with the S24 Ultra, I mean, it looks a lot like the S23 Ultra, which looked a lot like the S22 Ultra. But nevertheless, I think both devices look really good. And I do like the matte finish that we have across both devices, including the frames. Previous generations did have glossy frames, which I wasn't personally a huge fan of. Now let's turn these devices around and take a look at the displays. So so the first thing to note is that the S24 Ultra now does have a flat display. Previous generations have had some curves along the sides. The iPhone 15 Pro Max has always had a flat display. Now, this is gonna come down to your personal preference. I do think curved displays look better, but flat displays are more practical and easier to apply screen protectors to. We've got ceramic shields on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. We've got Gorilla Armor on the S24 Ultra. Now, Gorilla Armor is exclusive to the S24 Ultra. It's supposed to reduce reflections by around 75%. It's four times more scratch resistant compared to the previous generation. And it's also using 25% recycled materials. Ceramic shields Apple claim is tougher than any smartphone glass. Now, I am not somebody who does drop tests, so I'm not gonna be dropping these. I'm sure lots of others out there will be. But in my experience, both of these are very premium and also very durable. I can notice that the S24 Ultra is less reflective compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now these displays are absolutely beautiful. They're some of the best displays that you're gonna find out there. We've got a slightly larger display on the S24 Ultra. Both are using AMOLED technology and they both have up to a 120 Hertz refresh rate, making things very smooth, but they can also go down to one Hertz, making them more efficient. The S24 Ultra does get some advantages for its display. Firstly, it does have a slightly high resolution, which means that things will be a little bit sharper. And it also has a higher peak brightness of 2,600 nits versus 2,000 nits on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So the iPhone 15 Pro Max is already very bright, but the S24 Ultra is just brighter and it's gonna help in outdoor situations, especially if you wear sunglasses like I do. Both have always on displays and you can also have the wallpaper on, on both always on displays. I personally don't like having this on because I find it distracting. And the S24 Ultra does have a higher screen to body ratio because we have just a very small punch out. This is smaller compared to what we had in the previous generation. On the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we have that dynamic island, which does take more space. Now there's a reason for that dynamic island. We do have sensors for Face ID. Face ID works great. It's really fast and effective and secure. With the S24 Ultra, although you can use facial unlock, it's not as secure as Face ID, but it has the Gen 2 Qualcomm 3D Sonic fingerprint sensor. Now, this is pretty much the same as what we've had for the previous two generations, but it's one of the best fingerprint scanners out there, and I find it so quick and convenient. Now, whether you prefer Face ID or a fingerprint scanner is gonna come down to the way you use your phone. For me personally, I do prefer a fingerprint scanner. I just find it more convenient. With Face ID, 
Still, if I'm in bed and I just wanna kind of have a glance on my phone and my face is in my pillow, it's not gonna unlock and I have to kind of get out and it's super annoying when I have to do that. So I do prefer a fingerprint scanner. But once again, there's nothing really wrong with Face ID. Right, now let's talk about the cameras. Hey! I got this, okay, I got okay, this. Fair enough. So, side stuff was just gonna remind you that if you're enjoying this video so far, you wanna see more like it, then do consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you don't miss future coverage like this. Now for the cameras, I have done a detailed, super SAS style camera comparison between these two. It's about 20 minutes long and I've covered all of the different aspects. I'll link that video down in the description. You can go ahead and check that out after this video. But to give you a summary, both have excellent cameras, some of the best cameras that you're gonna get in any smartphone. Both have a 12 megapixel selfie camera and both take excellent selfies. And for the rear facing camera, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has three rear facing cameras an ultra wide, a primary, as well as a five times telephoto. The S24 Ultra has four rear facing cameras, an ultra wide, a primary, a three times telephoto, as well as a five times periscope zoom camera. Now in my testing, both are really, really good in all situations. I would say that the iPhone 15 Pro Max does have overall better dynamic range. It's also better in low light, and it also has better video overall, especially when it comes to things like cinematic mode. The S24 Ultra, however, does have that dedicated three times telephoto camera. So for zoom ranges between three to 4.9, they are gonna be better on the S24 Ultra. As well as that, you've got better extended zoom on the S24 Ultra, and that's because Samsung's been doing extended zoom for a very long time. And it actually has excellent video, some of the best video on any Android smartphone that I've tested, with the ability to record 8K video, as well as 4K at up to 120 frames a second. These two things you don't have on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The S24 Ultra also has lots of AI features for photo editing, so you can remove reflections, shadows, you can select subjects, move them around, change their size. And my favorite, the ability to straighten an image without having to crop in, it can actually fill in the gaps outside, so you're not really losing anything from your image, and this actually works really well. Once again, please do check out my super SAS style camera comparison, which took me a very long time to do. You're not gonna wanna miss it. And yes, the S24 is just out, so no doubt there will be more software updates that will improve the cameras, and we will cover these updates in my full review. Right now, performance. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is powered by the A17 Pro. This is a three nanometer chipset. The S24 Ultra is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 4 Galaxy. So this has a higher clock speed compared to other Snapdragon 8 Gen 3s, and it's a four nanometer chipset. Now, in terms of performance, the iPhone 15 Pro Max does score higher in benchmarks, but in day-to-day -day performance, honestly, these are some of the fastest and smoothest devices out there. Whatever you throw at them, they work absolutely fine. They're also great for gaming. I'm not much of a gamer myself, but my friend Thunder E from Board at Work is, and he's done lots of gaming tests on both of these devices. I'll link those videos in the description below if you're interested. Now with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, one of the new things that we've got is the ability to play console level games right in your smartphone. I've tested Resident Evil Village and it works really well, but I'm still waiting for some of the titles. I'm still looking forward to Assassin's Creed Mirage, which uh, has been quite a few months now, but this might be something that's appealing to you if you are a gamer. Now we do have more RAM on the S24 Ultra compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but because we're running different operating systems, they do manage RAM differently. Having said that, I have found in my experience that I can leave things running in the background more often on the S24 Ultra compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The 15 Pro Max is very aggressive. I mean, before, even if you were trying to upload a story on Instagram, if you just went away and onto another app, it would not finish uploading in the background. Now it does, but if you're uploading something like a reel, then it will literally tell you that keep the app open to finish uploading. And I find that quite frustrating. Whereas on the S24 Ultra, I can just leave something uploading, carry on and do something else, and it's gonna finish uploading in the background. Now for software, we of course have iOS versus Android. The iPhone 15 Pro Max comes with iOS 17.2.1 currently at this time of this video. The S24 Ultra will be coming with Android 14 and One UI 6.1 on top. One new thing to note with the S24 Ultra is the fact that Samsung are now promising seven generations of Android OS updates. 
This is super impressive. It brings it in line with the Pixel devices. Now, whether or not they're gonna keep up with the promise of those updates, we're gonna have to wait and see. But the iPhone 15 Pro Max, Apple has been known to support their devices for a long time. Usually it's around five years. It might be longer with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but I don't have a set time for it. Now, I'm not gonna go into a full-on battle of Android versus iOS, but there are certain things that I like to mention based on my personal usage. I do prefer the overall customization that you have on Android. You can see here that I've got multiple icons. I've got five columns, whereas you can only have four on the iPhone. I've also got the icons at the bottom, which are easy to reach. With the iPhone, I can't do that unless I spam widgets at the top of my screen. I also really like the app icons that I get in the notification bar, so I have a quick glance of what's available. When I'm using my iPhone, I don't like to have those interruptions, so it would be nice if there was something like that there too. But with the iPhone, things are just always more optimized. Now, Samsung has worked with Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok to optimize the cameras for use within those apps. But apps are generally always more optimized on iPhone compared to Android. I can give you a few examples. TikTok, we still don't have a dark mode on Android. We've had it for years on the iPhone. Right now, if I'm trying to post a story on Instagram on my S24 Ultra, and I wanna use hashtags, I can generally only use one. If I try to do others, they just simply won't work, whereas I've never had this problem on the iPhone. And YouTube actually gets a lot of updates on the iPhone first before Android, and YouTube's an app from Google, and Google makes Android. But it just shows you how much easier it is to get some updates on to iOS compared to Android. Now, one thing that I've absolutely loved on the iPhone for the past few years is AirDrop. We've had quick share and nearby share, but things were quite disjointed and not completely consistent on Android. I actually even made a meme about this. I just made a pass 120 hertz display here, 8K video recording here, 18 GB RAM here. Get here to my pass. Made a pass AirDrop here. The good news is that QuickShare is now gonna be the new standard across all Android devices and Windows PCs. So it should bring it in line with AirDrop. It's gonna take some time for it to roll out across all other devices, but I'm definitely looking forward to this. Now the S24 Ultra does have some new AI features which are some key selling points of the device, so we do have to touch on them. The first one is Live Translate. So picture yourself abroad on holiday and you wanna book a table in a restaurant, you don't speak the local language, well, the S24 Ultra is gonna be able to help with that. It's gonna be able to take what you're saying, translate it over to the person on the other side, and then when they reply, it's gonna translate that back to you. Now, it's not instant. Obviously, there is a bit of a pause, but the person on the other side will be told that this is being translated, so that should help. And we have 13 languages supported right now. I have tested this. It is pretty impressive. The only other languages that I can somewhat speak are Hindi and Urdu. And when I was speaking in Hindi, the voice that they have on here currently is only a female voice. So I was speaking and it was speaking out as a female, which was uh, quite funny. Now I'm sure we're gonna have more voices and more support coming down the line. We've also got the interpreter feature, which does work really well. You can see it here. Hi, my name is Saf and I have a YouTube channel called Super Saf TV. Hi. There's chat assist which can adjust the tone of your conversation. You can make your conversation sound a bit more formal, a bit more friendly. Browsing assist is quite useful. You can summarize web pages and highlight key areas. And I think my favorite AI feature so far is circle to search. So you can just tap and hold on the home button or the navigation bar. Then you can just circle whatever is on your screen and it's gonna go ahead and find that for you. Now I did test this out with our traditional Apple event picture and circling the trainers, it actually did find that there were the MKBHD Atoms 251s. Now, I was very impressed with this because those trainers are very small in that picture and it was still able to find them. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that Samsung has said in the small print that these Galaxy AI features will be provided for free until the end of 2025. 
So there may be a monthly charge after that. And at this time, we have no idea how much that might be. Now let's talk about some of the additional features that we have on both devices. So with the S24 Ultra, of course, we have the S Pen. Now I don't use this all the time, but when I do need it, it's amazing to have, whether that's just to make some quick notes, which can now be straightened up using AI, editing some images, or even signing a document. It also has Bluetooth, so you can use it as a clicker or a trigger for your shutter button as the camera. This is something that I have used quite a few times, set up the camera and then use this to take the picture. And although the S Pen hasn't changed too much over the past few years, it's still very, very useful. The iPhone 15 Pro Max also has some unique features of its own. It's got a LiDAR scanner, which can measure depth information. This is really useful if you wanna use AR. And we now have the action button. This is a customizable button that we've got at the top of the device. And you can really customize this. You can make it open any shortcut. You can make it open an app. You can also use it to open a particular instance within an app. So for instance, whenever you use the camera, if you always shoot video, you can have it to open video as soon as you press it. With the S24 Ultra, you can double press the power button to launch the camera and you can also customize it to open a particular app, but you don't have the level of customization that you have on the action button. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really use the action button on the iPhone 15 Pro Max because it is the top most button of the device. It's not very practical. I would have preferred it if it was somewhere around here. And then I could also use it as a shutter button for the camera. The S24 Ultra now has Wi-Fi 7. So if you do have a compatible router, you're gonna be able to get some very fast speeds. The S24 Ultra also has support for DeX, so you're gonna be able to wirelessly connect this to a television and get a desktop experience. You can also connect a mouse and a keyboard to it. And this is gonna be so useful if you're somebody who travels a lot. Now looking at the speakers, we do have stereo speakers on both devices, one in the earpiece and one bottom firing. Both of these sound absolutely great to me. I am no audiophile, so I did ask for advice from my friend Thunder E at Board at Work. And to him again, he said, this time things are very even. We did find previously that the iPhone was richer compared to the S23 Ultra, but Samsung has improved the speakers of the S24 Ultra. Now, one new thing that we had on the iPhone this year is USB Type-C. It was a long time coming, but it's finally here. The S24 Ultra also has USB Type-C, so you can charge both devices with the same cable. Speaking of cables, the iPhone 15 Pro Max does come with a very nice braided cable out of the box. The S24 Ultra still comes with a very standard USB Type-C cable. Now for SIM cards, the S24 Ultra does have dual physical SIM card slots in some regions, and we also have support for an eSIM. With the iPhone 15 Pro Max, here in the UK, you do have a physical SIM as well as an eSIM, but in the US, there is no SIM tray, and I know that's frustrating for a lot of people. Now for the batteries, we have a larger physical battery on the S24 Ultra, but it's not just about the size of the battery, it is about how you use it. That sounds kind of dodgy. We're running different operating systems, so they do manage the batteries differently. And in my experience, both of these have excellent battery life. I think they are very, very similar. Now I'm sure there's gonna be lots of battery drain tests out there, which are gonna tell you exactly how many minutes one is better than the other. I don't really find those too accurate because a lot of them, they use devices that they've been using for the past few months, so obviously the battery is not gonna be as good. If you do wanna look out for a battery test, then I'd recommend checking out Phone Buff's test, which will be coming soon. But nevertheless, back to the point, for me, I'd say the battery life is very even. Both have excellent battery life, but the S24 Ultra does have faster wired charging. You've got up to 45 watts, where you've only got 20 watts on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So that's gonna give you around 50% in 35 minutes on the iPhone. On the S24 Ultra, if you do get a 45 watt charger, it's gonna give you around 50% in 20 minutes. Neither of these come with a charger included out of the box. The S24 Ultra also supports 15 watts of Qi wireless charging. You've got 7.5 watts on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. However, if you do use a MagSafe wireless charger, you can get up to 15 watts. MagSafe is really cool and it just snaps on and works. There's lots of accessories supported as well. The S24 Ultra also supports wireless power share. So that's reverse wireless charging. You can charge some earbuds at the back of the S24 Ultra if you'd like. With the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you can plug in a USB cable into another device to be able to charge it, but you can't do this wirelessly. Right, pricing and availability. So 
these devices are available in three different storage variants, 256, 512 gigabytes, as well as a massive one terabyte version. In the UK, the 512 gigabytes, as well as the one terabyte version of the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra are priced exactly the same. The 256 version is priced at 50 pounds more. In the US, however, the S24 Ultra price has increased. So each version is gonna be slightly more compared to the iPhone. Now this varies quite a bit depending on the storage version you go for. For the 256 gigabyte version, you're gonna be paying $100 more compared to the iPhone. But for the 512 gigabytes version, you're only gonna be paying $20 more compared to the iPhone. However, as mentioned earlier, Samsung actually has some really good pre-order deals for the S24 Ultra. So currently you can get double the storage and you can get up to $150 of instant Samsung credit using my exclusive affiliate link down in the description below. Now, if we consider this, then you are gonna be paying less for the S24 Ultra compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. With Apple, I don't really see any offers for their iPhones and the price stays the same until the next iPhone comes out. Now, I'm not sure how long these pre-order offers are gonna last, so you might wanna get hold of them soon if you are interested in buying the S24 Ultra, but even if you do buy it in about six months time, the price would have likely dropped. So considering all of this, you will be getting a better deal on the S24 Ultra compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And that is the detailed Super SAS style comparison of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I think both of these are excellent flagship smartphones. They're gonna be my two daily drivers going forward. Both obviously have advantages and disadvantages. With the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you have a consistent experience. You've got some amazing cameras. You've got a great display. With the S24 Ultra, you've got a better overall display, in my opinion. You've got the S Pen. You've got all of those new AI features and you've still got really good cameras. But it might just fundamentally come down to which operating system is the one for you. You might not be willing to switch. And in that case, I can easily recommend either of these smartphones. That's what I think anyway. What do you guys think? Drop me a comment below, let me know your thoughts. If you wanna see that super SAS style camera comparison, I'm gonna link that here. If maybe you're not interested in the S24 Ultra, you wanna check out the S24 or the S24 Plus, I will also cover those devices here. If you wanna see more content like this going forward, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button for me. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super SAF TV, and I'll see you next time.